Art Nerds, today we're taking a look at another set of watercolors from my Japan trip haul. We're going to be looking at the Turner Artist watercolors today, so keep watching. These Turner Artist watercolors were purchased from Sakaido in Tokyo, and I paid about 2052 for them, or 2,052 yen. And you can find them at Jerry's Artorama. The set of 12, like this, are currently going for $43, but they're out of stock. You can, however, get the set of 18 assorted colors in the 5 milliliter tubes rather than the 15 milliliter tubes for $25.99 right now, and it's currently in stock. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. And something I really like about Japan is that compared to the U.S., the art supplies are much more affordable. $20 as compared to $43.99. Of course, these look like, yeah, these look like the 5 milliliter tubes. They're awfully cute. Um, so that would probably place them around $20 if Jerry's were to sell them in this form factor. So I have here a pad of fluid cold press cellulose based watercolor paper. We're going to use this to begin our test. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some black lines and that way we can do a little bit of opacity testing. So I'll give these lines a couple of minutes to cure and then we'll begin swatching our Turner Artist watercolors. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a dot of color and hopefully a very small dot at the top. Don't want to waste a lot of watercolor doing a test. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with all 12 colors. They do have um, an English name at the top as well as a color number here. So this is Pyrrole Red. Then we're gonna do permanent scarlet, permanent yellow, thalo green, blue shade, sap green, thalo blue, green shade, ultramarine, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ivory black, and Chinese white. So it's actually a really nice collection of colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all those dots for you guys. In the US, these are often referred to as Turner Concentrated Professional Artist Watercolors. The box itself reads, a flicker in the sky, a whisper in the wind, speaking of bright color of the pure shade within. The brush moves so easily, the color spreads so well, a material of choice, expressive surfaces propel. Wow, hey, hey, that's like the best box poetry I have ever encountered. Let's see, no other English on the box, but that was nice, right? So we're gonna cheat and we're gonna read from the Jerry site real quick. Turner Concentrated Artist Watercolors are a true professional paint, combining the finest pure pigments in gum Arabic with the highest light pass ratings and superb transparency and flow. The well-balanced, vibrant range of 148 colors, wow, 148 colors, professional colors, has an amazing 65, si single pigment colors and single pigment colors are good because um, it, just one pigment has been used to make that color. They're less likely to separate out into individual colors and they're less le likely to give you muddy mixes. So single pigment is good or can be good. Ensuring beautifully clean color mixing. Only the highest quality pigments are painstakingly ground to a uniform fineness without fillers, blended with high quality gum arabic and wetting agents for vivid, brilliant colors with a smoothly free flow consistency. So there's 148 colors in the range with 65 of those 148 colors being single pigment colors, fine pure pigments, no fillers, high lightness, light fastness ratings, and um, Jerry's has the 15 milliliter tubes which are pretty big. These are just little five milliliter tubes so they're much smaller. So I am actually extremely excited about these now. I'd been told that they were not so nice, but you know what, we're gonna find out. So I'm using clean water. And I may have to clean it out. So that's actually a pretty thick concentration how I'm applying it at the top. I should have done lines at the bottom as well. And I also wanna try these dried out in a palette like I did with the Holbein 
and with the Magello, but honestly, these colors are really pretty. These seem really nice. Very bright colors, at least when wet. Especially that phthalo blue. Oh, y'all, look at that. And I only paid $20 approximately, well, plus the cost of like going to Japan and then flying them back. Ah, that ultramarine is gorgeous. It's still, it's a great price for artist, artist quality watercolors. I'm gonna see if I can find this exact set on Amazon, but if not, and even if so, that 18 color set for $25, that's a good price. You guys should get on that, and that's through Jerry's Artorama. And they're always running sales too. because these are actually very nice. I've picked up a few uh, Turner colors back in my more experimental, I will only buy one tube and figure out if I like a brand days. And I didn't care for those. I bought like Cinnabar and something else because they were very uh, opaque, but I think I got the wrong colors because these are gorgeous, you guys. So again, from left to right, we've got Pyrol Red. Permanent Scarlet, Permanent Yellow, Thalo Green, Blue Hue, Blue Shade, Sap Green, Thalo Blue, Green Shade, Ultramarine, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Ivory Black, and Chinese White. And those are some really beautiful colors. So I am going to go ahead and order a small palette off of Amazon. Meaden has some very affordable little palettes. When that comes in, I will finish this video and we're gonna find out how well these reactivate from a dried state. But I am really excited about these Turner Artist watercolors. And this is part of kind of a larger review series where I'm trying to review uh, mid-range, slightly nicer watercolors because I'm trying to find something a little more sustainable for painting seven inch Kara with. So I'll see you guys when I have the palette. I wanted to show you guys how vivid these colors kind of remain after they've dried. I mean, they're really beautiful and I'm really excited to get to field test these. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with them. Okay, friends, it's a few days later. My Hanbei 12 half pan palette has arrived. So that means we can put our Turner watercolors in our palette and I opted for a small palm size palette since there's only 12 colors in this Turner set. Usually when I'm going for cheap watercolors, I go with Meaden, but Hanbei was actually a little bit cheaper and it looks like it's the same palette used by like Jane Davenport, um, Prima Marketing, very common, inexpensive little palette. You can get them on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below. This one seems to be a little bit better welded than some of the other ones I've gotten. Um, I had a Meaden one. I think it's in a video, in fact, where like this part just kind of starts to come off in my hands. So we also get 12 half pants. And I'll just bend these a little bit out of the way. And what I like to do when I'm setting up my palette, and I have tutorials for this, is I like to use, if I have it, double stick tape. If I don't have it, I'll use folded over washi tape like this. And I stick it on the bottom of my pans and that'll help keep things in place. If you feel like gluing magnets, that can be a really good way to help keep your stuff organized, but I don't have time for that. So that is not a thing that I do. I'm kind of scrounging around for a Sharpie and not finding one. And let's see, these have color, they, well, they have names obviously, but they also have identifying numbers. So like ultramarine is 54A, and I think that's what I'm gonna write on these half pans since they are small. So I'll do one as a demo using the liquid chrome. I use it for like literally everything but what it should probably be used for. Looks really chromey though on plastic, doesn't it? And filling up a half pan takes about a third of a tube of this particular selection. And then take our double stick or our washi tape, apply it to the bottom of our half pan. 
and then we pan it in place. So I'm gonna do the rest of these for you guys. Okay, so I've got every color here. Isn't that really pretty? Um, I did notice that they are labeled A. Uh, almost all of them are A. There is one B. No, two Bs and a C. So basically, watercolors tend to be graded A through F, which reflects the expensiveness or the scarcity of the pigments used. Most of these are A pigments. That doesn't mean that A pigments aren't okay pigments. There's plenty of really common pigments that are kind of the best at what they do, um, like lamp black, carbon black, titanium white, you know. You don't see a lot of alternatives to those because they work really well and they're very inexpensive and very easy to come by. So they tend to be A grade. In fact, we have ivory black here. That's A grade. It's not made from ivory. It's, um, I have to look it up, but I, yeah, I'm just gonna have to look it up. I don't wanna like guess and be wrong and have somebody horrified in the comments. Not horrified that I'm wrong, because y'all have no problem telling me when I'm wrong, but horrified, uh, which is good. I want y'all to call me out, um, but just horrified. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they would do that. So I'll humor both of us and wash the paint off my hand, but I need to let these dry for 24 hours. Let them dry out. I like using most of my watercolors, even if they came from a tube originally, in half pans. This is how I am most comfortable. This is how I prefer working. So I had to pan these puppies before I could go ahead and begin the field test. And you guys can find a link to this cute little palette in the description below. I usually go for cheap, but also metal, tends to be my MO. And it's got a cute little thumb ring on the bottom, which makes for easier plain air painting. I'm not gonna flip it, obviously. So, yeah, let me go wash my hand. So, since I brought up ivory black, ivory black is usually used synonymously with bone black, which comes from a similar pigment. And these are made, as I thought, but I didn't wanna say, by charring animal bones. Modern ivory black is pretty much always bone black because ivory is super scarce. So no ivory, fingers crossed, but maybe bones. All right, art nerds, it's finally time to finish our Turner watercolor review. It has sat in this little set for quite a while since I've been kind of ill. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to put just a little bit of water on every dry half pan just to kind of reactivate it. And then we're gonna do a swatch test on Blick Premier watercolor paper. This is 100% um, cotton rag watercolor paper, 140 pounds. It is stretched on a block. I really like it. I recommend you guys check it out if you're looking for an affordable alternative to arches. All right, give that a couple seconds to soak in. As you guys can probably see, they reduced in volume as they dried pretty significantly. And I'm gonna do one swatch where it's kind of gradiated out so you guys can maybe see any potential sedimentation. And then I'm gonna do one where it's a mass tone. And I already applied my black line so we can test for opacity.
gonna give these swatches a chance to dry and then I'll check in with you guys. All right, so these have had a chance to dry. The color is still fairly brilliant. Something I found kind of disappointing with the reconstituted tube colors is that the black is incredibly weak. I kept trying to mix it a little bit stronger within the confines of this test, and that just wasn't happening. Your best bet with Turner watercolors may be to work directly from the tube or to work while they're still fairly fresh. This does happen with tube watercolors from time to time. Not all tube color watercolors work well in dried half palettes and that's why I test them. Some artists like myself do prefer the dried half palettes and some prefer working directly from tubes. However, I felt like this was a reasonably priced watercolor set, especially if you can get it at the Japanese Sakaido price. And I am very pleased with the color selection and I think it's a very usable 12 color set. So that was my unboxing swatch for the Turner Artist Watercolor 12 color set. I purchased this from Sakaido in Tokyo and I thought I still had the tag on this. Unfortunately, I don't, but you guys can find the price out in the description below and from the beginning of the video. The colors included in this set are Pyrrole Red, Permanent Scarlet, Permanent yellow, thalo green, blue shade, sap green, thalo blue, green shade. I meant thalo green, sorry. Thalo blue, green shade, ultramarine, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ivory black, and Chinese white. You can also find these watercolors through Amazon and through Jerry's Artorama, although the price is a little bit higher. These could be a really good solution if you're looking for affordable student grade watercolors and you're displeased with Cotman's results. And I do have a, re um, a review for Cotman here on this channel. These uh, colors work best from the tube. That's when you're gonna get the most vibrant, most saturated colors, but they can be reconstituted from half pans. The only color that really seems to suffer is the ivory black. The colors are fairly transparent, and I look forward to putting these colors to the test in my upcoming field test video. So I hope this little mini review was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions or maybe turn you on to a brand that you had previously overlooked. I look forward to seeing you guys again, and if you are looking for more watercolor content, make sure you check out some of my other watercolor reviews and tutorials here on this channel. If you're looking for in-depth watercolor tutorials, head on over to natosuit.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor base series where I walk you step by step through illustration and comics in watercolor. If you like watercolor art, make sure you check out my beautiful watercolor web comic, 7 inch Kara at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!